this is uh, coffee in correct grammar. So for those of uh, you out there who have grammar questions, more than happy to answer them for you here during this live stream. Um, most of the questions that you may have, the answers are probably on this YouTube channel. I've yet to be asked a question that the answer is not on my YouTube channel, but I'm here to make it convenient for you and uh, hopefully give you some closure if that's what you're looking for with regards to correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. If one does not have closure on the grammar, then one cannot create a correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar contract with knowledge as authority. First, you have to have the knowledge in order to have the authority. First, you have to have closure on the terms and conditions that you're using. Like if someone says, well, you have to have a correct contract. What is your finite mean of correct? What does correct mean? What is your correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, finite mean, definition for correct? What is a fact? I've given closure to what a fact is as far as I'm concerned, and that's in a video called The Finite Mean of the Fact, which you can find on my YouTube channel. It's very detailed. And these are the things that uh, one could do for themselves if they want to participate with this technology. In correct sentence structure, there are four positionals. For, of, with, and by. Now the reason why there are four is because each positional has one congruency. Meaning, I guess a, a close approximation would say each positional has an opposite which the word opposite is not entirely correct. That's why I use the word congruent. For example, the positional for is congruent with the positional by. The positional of is congruent with the positional with. So when you're reading a sentence, a correct sentence, forwards and backwards, those positionals would swap places. That's how that's the manner in which the mathematical interface comes into play. Where just like a math problem, the order of operations determines the value of the conveyance. So that's how you would check a correct sentence structure. Does it maintain the same integrity, the same value forwards as it does backwards? If it doesn't, then it's not correct. There's something wrong in there. And there has to be a specific sequencing of those positionals. For example, for the facts, of the facts, are, with the facts, of the facts, with the facts, by the facts, period. You have your cause, your concern, your verb, your possessive, your concern, your possessive, and your authority. Forwards and backwards. Always, and I can't drill this home, uh, I can't emphasize this enough. In order to draw a straight line, you have to have two points. You draw one dot, then you draw a straight line to another dot, two points. That's what the cause and the concern portions of the sentence represent. For the facts, of the facts. Two positional lodial fact phrases, always. Then you can safely put your verb of the thinking in. In this case, it's R because facts in the cause position are plural, is plural. So then after R, the verb of the thinking, the cogitation, then you would put the possessive with the facts, and so on and so forth. It's a specific sequencing. And then when you go backwards, it says the same thing. For the facts, of the facts, then you put your verb in. There's always two points. Draw your straight line you have established. Your geometric level playing field of communication conveyance. It's clear. 
You've established that geometric level playing field. You know where you're going. Now you can safely put your verb in there to move the cause and the concern into the possessive of the claim. This works the same forwards as it does backwards. Always the cause, concern, verb. Then you can have as many possessive and concerns as you want after the verb, as long as you finish the sentence with a possessive and then an authority. So the cause, and this is logical too, the cause starts everything, the authority ends it. Because something has to come from something, right? So it's a cause. And then you go through those details and then you come to the end, which is the authority of the whole thing. And it works the same forwards as it does backwards. That is how you create a correct sentence structure. I've just given you closure on how to create a correct sentence structure. Now, when you take a name on a live life claim, a punctuated name, those punctuations have functions. When you have a colon, here, I'll write it in the, in the chat. I'll write my name, my correct name in the chat. So we have colon, capital J, lowercase a-s-o-n, hyphen, uppercase M, lowercase A-T-T-H-E-W, colon, space, capital G, lowercase L-A-S-S, -S, and then a period. In a correct sentence structure contract, all of those particles would be given closure to. So the colon, in this case, because, as I just explained and gave closure, we have a cause and a concern always at the beginning of the sentence. This, of course, is not a complete sentence because there's no verb of the thinking in it. It's a name. Still, we start with a cause, what would be considered the cause. The colon would represent for the. If you see a name and the colon is right there in front of the J with no space, it means for the. If you see a colon and a space and then the name, now it means of the. But you would not start a sentence with an of the. That is not correct. The correct way to start a sentence or to start anything is with a cause. And everything has to come from a cause. Hence, colon, Jason hyphen Matthew, for the Jason hyphen Matthew. Now the hyphen is a connector. It connects two facts together to form a compound fact. That is the function of the hyphen. The reason why the J is capitalized and the M is capitalized is because it's a rule one, rule equal performance. What happens on one side of the hyphen has to happen on the other side of the hyphen, format wise. So we have Jason hyphen Matthew, and then we have colon space. In this case, this represents the concern. What is Jason hyphen Matthew, the cause, concerned with? It's concerned with glass, G-L-A-S-S, -S, period. So it's for the Jason hyphen Matthew of the glass. And then if you were to read it backwards, it's not a complete sentence, but if you were to read it backwards, it would just say, with the glass by the Jason hyphen Matthew, period. That is the mechanics of the punctuated name. One way to do the punctuated name. Now, people have other ways, you know, they have to put in things like, you know, maybe colon Jason hyphen Matthew, colon space, glass, comma, space, tilde, um, the first or something like that. You know, there are a lot of other things you can do there or junior, um, but this is the basic format for the name. The parentheses you use when speaking in Babel is the four corner rule. Is this the four corner 
rule. Um, I do have a video on the reason why I use parentheses. And I'll pop a link in there. If you were in my last stream, we spoke about it then as well. But yes, it has to do with boxing and the four corner rule. The long and short of it is I use brackets in any fiction communication that I, any written fiction communication that I use, I use brackets because I personally do not wish to participate with fiction babble. So I take it off the page, but I'm not here to be misunderstood. And nine times out of 10, people don't know what that means anyways. They just read the words and my volition is to be understood. And I know also that 9.9 .9 out of 10 people don't know correct sentence structure. So why would I use it if they don't understand it? What good is it going to do? So I put my stuff in brackets because number one, I don't want to participate with the fiction and bureaucratically I know what I'm doing and it takes it off the page. And number two, I don't want to be misunderstood. So I use the language of the audience that I'm speaking to. That's why I do it. Now, let me go. I'm going to go find that video and I'll post up the link to it. And just to uh, just reiterate what I said earlier, any question that you have can be answered if you take the time to check out the videos on my YouTube channel. It's all there. And again, this is another reason why I edit the videos and repost them later is I can take this, what we'll call dead space out of it and just keep the good stuff in there. That should do it. Okay, that link I just posted is the link to the why I use brackets video. For the sensation of this viewer is with the gratitude for the knowledge sharing of by the viewer for the verification of the viewer's knowledge. All right, Cyber Watcher, thank you for posting up your sentence there. I'm going to put it under scrutiny, if you don't mind, because you are on my vessel, in my learning vessel, comments field. So I will use this as a teaching mechanism. So your cause is for the sensation. There is one cause per sentence. So we have for the sensation. And what's the sensation concerned with? The viewer. We have our two points. Now we can drop our verb of the thinking in there. Is singular because sensation is singular. Now we go into the possessive with the gratitude. The gratitude is possessive of the viewer. Very good. So what is the gratitude concerned with? But we don't have a concern. You have put another cause after the gratitude which is not correct because each sentence has one uh, cause per sentence. So therefore, for, F-O-R, would never come after the verb. It's always the first position lodial phrase in the sentence, for the. So that is not correct. So we could say, we could uh, correct it to of the knowledge sharing. So the gratitude is concerned with of the knowledge hyphen sharing. And then again, the ing is a gerund modifier. I personally do not use ing. I would just use knowledge hyphen share. And because we have of the here, instead of for the, now we cannot have an of Jason Matthew Glass. It has to be with. And you have of and then space and then colon Jason, which is not correct. 
you would not need a colon in front of the J because it's already been positioned by of or with, which would be the correct way to say it, with. And you would need a lodial in there. You don't have a lodial in there. And I imagine it's a typo, but you spelled Matthew wrong. And you put the uh, colon after Jason. It's Jason hyphen Matthew colon space glass. And then you have by the viewer. So I'm going to type out something. I, I can see what you want to convey there. So I'm going to type out something for you to look at and consider. Okay. There's one way to write the sentence. So in the sentence I wrote, it's for the claimant's knowledge, which is the cause, and it's concerned with the facts of the facts. Then we put our verb in is, and then it's possessive with the claim because you have a claimant. Therefore, we are making a claim, correct? So we would have to have claimant and claim in there. And what are we claiming? You're claiming gratitude. And what's the gratitude possessive of? I mean, what's possessing the gratitude? The knowledge share. You're grateful for a knowledge share. What's concerned with the knowledge share? The knowledge share of the Jason Matthew Glass. What's possessing the Jason Matthew Glass and the knowledge share? The sensation, because you're sensing it. It's coming in through one of your five sentences, or, or, you know, maybe two or three of your senses. You can certify it's coming through your port of sensation, so it's with this sensation, and then the authority of the claim is you, the viewer. And then I put the name cyber hyphen watcher there. And that would be one way to say it. And it is correct. And then there's the last part of the sentence for the verification of the viewer's knowledge. Um, that's fine. That's an incomplete sentence. It would be like a name for the Jason hyphen Matthew of the glass for the verification of the viewer's knowledge. The only problem with it is there's no hyphen between viewer and knowledge. And also viewer is, is not spelled correctly. No big deal uh, at this stage. But you definitely need a hyphen between your compound facts or it throws the whole thing into adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun. So there's your grammar lesson. And this is something, if you are to use this in a real-life scenario, this is something that you would need to be able to do on the spot. Create a correct sentence structure and show someone, if you're gonna tell someone that their grammar is not correct or that they're having a, a fictitious conveyance of grammar scenario, well then you yourself have to be able to use correct grammar and explain why it's correct. It's all about you and your knowledge closure. And thank you, CyberWatcher, for uh, providing that sentence in that learning scenario for everyone else. Much appreciated. And then, of course, backwards. For this viewer, comma, CyberWatcher, of this sensation is with the Jason Matthew glass of the knowledge share with the gratitude of the claim with the facts by the claimant's knowledge, period. And in that case, the cause is the viewer cyber watcher and then the authority is the claimant's knowledge. So it maintains the same integrity forwards as it does backwards. Anyone else with any grammar questions? Yes, Cyber Watcher, and, and, and I appreciate that. I appreciate that uh, opportunity to teach everyone else and um, to help everyone else to learn this. Because you definitely have to try. I mean, you can read all the books you want to about swimming, but until you jump in the water, you don't know if you're going to be able to swim or not. Can you please talk about positional phrases after conjunct conjunctions? Yes, as a matter of fact, we spoke about that in the last live stream, and I gave a link to my closure on that. As uh, stated before in the video, if you, in this video, if, if you look at my YouTube channel, 
nine times out of 10, you will find the answer to your question if you just take the time to watch the video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to post up a link for you to my personal website. And you can just watch those videos on there and uh, get the closure for yourself. And, well, and I'll, I'll have a small discussion about it after I post up these links. One minute, please. And I'll find the link for you to make your job a little bit easier. What is a conjunction? Um, what, is, what is your closure on what a conjunction is? What is your comprehension as to what a conjunction is? In correct sentence structure, there are two conjunctions. And which is a command, and or, which is a choice. A conjunction is neutral. It's a neutral condition of state. It does not modify anything, nor does it modify anything. I think I just said the same thing twice. Let me say that again. It does not modify anything, nor is it modified by anything. And and or are non-tangible contract words. And they're neutral. So if they are functioning as a conjunction, then they would maintain a value of zero, neutral value. So in correct sentence structure, briefly, um, it is a bridge. You can think of it as a bridge between position lodial fact phrases or between facts. So you can have a 5670567 or you can have a 56707. In the fiction, when you're syntaxing fiction documents, if you're familiar with the five syntax scenarios, that conjunction can serve as a bridge between any of those five syntax scenarios, or it can serve as a bridge between adverbs, or it can serve as a bridge between verbs, or pronouns, or adjectives. It just depends upon the entire scenario. Those are simple judge mechanics. You have to zoom back and look at the whole scenario before you put those values in. So that's my brief closure on a conjunction. The rest of it's more detailed in those videos I sent. With regards to the conjunction, I just thought of this example to use. If you say, um, Let me think of a good example. The book and record. The book and record. I'll type it in the chat. The book and record. I challenge uh, the men and women in the chat to syntax that little sentence right there. It should be interesting to see what results we get, especially um, to the person who asked about the conjunction, I would like to see what their syntax of that sentence is. There are also some instances in the fiction where a conjunction does not actually function as a conjunction. Oh, hello, Colin, David. Sorry, I missed your message up there. How you doing? What is goods in adjective, pronoun, or adverb, verb, please? What is goods in? Goods in? David, are you asking me to syntax the word goods and in? G-O-O-D-S space I-N. Is that what you're asking? Well, first, let me ask you a question. Is goods tangible contract or non-tangible contract? That's the question I would ask you first. Okay, David. So you would say goods is tangible. So... If it's tangible contract, then that means what? It means it cannot be an adverb, right?
for the book and of the record. Uh, no, that is not correct. I was asking you to syntax it. And by syntax, I mean identify each word, whether it's an adverb, adjective, uh, ver adverb, verb, adjective, or pronoun. I wasn't asking you to translate it into correct sentence structure. Sorry for any misunderstanding. I was actually asking you to syntax it. That's why I didn't put it in brackets. I literally wrote in adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun. So what I would like you to do is syntax it. You understand what I mean by syntax? I mean, put the, the number values next to the fiction words. That's what I mean by syntax. Sorry about that. And also, if you're saying um, for the book and of the record in a correct sentence structure sense, that is not correct because a conjunction is neutral. Uh, thank you. Let's word this knowledge. Cincinnati Cook, 1202. Very good. Very good. Very good job. And the point I bring up is that I see some people syntaxing it as 1204, and which is not correct because then that would mean that the conjunction is not neutral, that the conjunction is somehow modifying something or creating a break in the continuance of the evidence. So therefore, it would have to be 1202. The conjunction is a neutral bridge between verbs, which are being modified by the adverb. That's how I would syntax it. Correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar is made up of three elements. Correct sentence structure communication, which is the way we communicate, which is the using the mathematical interface on grammar for the cause of the concern is with the possessive of the concern with the possessive by the authority. The next part is parse, which are the parts of the words, the particles of the words. You find out their finite means, their root meanings through etymology dictionaries, Latin dictionaries, Sanskrit dictionaries, and you cross-reference them, parse. And then syntax, which is the way words work together with one another, the way they correlate with one another to form a coherence. And in the fiction, there is no coherence. That's why it's a language of modification, hence adverbs and adjectives. In correct sentence structure, there is no modification. That's why you only have five, sixes, seven, zeros, and twos. And there's only one two per each claim. Man, we got some interesting usernames on here, isn't that? There was one person, one uh, entity, that had uh, a crazy long username last time. I used to do the same thing. I used to use nom de guerres and stuff when I was on the internet. I don't do that anymore. Um, I just use my correct name for the most part. Correct, David. That's the way I would do it. Because as we know, any word, group, or sentence may only end on a two or a four, right? Can only end on a verb or a pronoun. Sentences would, or in word groups would never end on adverbs or adjectives. Why? Because adverbs and adjectives are modifiers and there's nothing left to modify. Yeah, so the, um, the syntax key, there are 10 elements to it. Zero is the conjunction, one is the adverb, two is verb, three is adjective, four is pronoun, five is positional, six is lodial, seven is fact, eight is past tense, nine is future tense. And that is the syntax key. Of course, if anyone's interested in learning correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar, feel free to peruse my YouTube channel here. All of my knowledge is contained in this channel. I've um, invested 
hundreds and hundreds of hours of creating these videos for those that are interested in learning it and they can invest whatever now space they would like in learning it by studying the videos. And also for those who like one-on-one -on -one tutorship or mentorship, you can contact me at uh, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and apply for a confidential workshop, if you so choose, 60 minute uh, confidential workshop. And yes, there is an application vetting process to qualify for that. And the reason why people ask me, why 60 minutes? Why can't we do two, three, four hours? Uh, and the reason is because I found that anything less than 60 minutes is not enough. Anything more than 60 minutes and the student or pupil's eyes just kind of glaze over. Like they, they lose concentration after about 60 minutes. And I've been doing this since February of 2018. I've been doing it for a few years. And across the board, this is what has happened. I've never had one student that that didn't happen with where they just kind of lose their focus and concentration. They get kind of overwhelmed, maybe. I don't know. That's just a, a guess on my part. But yeah, so 60-minute workshops. JasonMatthewG17 at gmail.com if, if you're with the volition of one-on-one -on -one mentorship and you want to apply for those. I am sat outside two businesses in my truck waiting to deliver goods. The two businesses are called Aston Manor Brewery in Bambi Air LTD. Are these both 334s? Yeah, I mean, you could say it's a 3340334. You could say 3330334. Whichever one you feel comfortable with, because the most important thing the most important thing is you and the closure you have on it because you are the authority of your grammar. And if you feel comfortable explaining it as a 3330334, then do that. If you feel comfortable explaining it as 3340334, you can do it that way. Because in the 3340334 scenario, the conjunction is functioning as a neutral bridge between two syntax scenarios, two three three fours. And in the first scenario, the three 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 zero three 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 four, I put too many threes in there, sorry. Three 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 zero three three four, now it's functioning as a bridge in between adjectives. Either which way, whatever you have closure on and can certify. The most important thing is your volition and your ability to certify the knowledge that you're sharing and your, and your skill in sharing that closure with another individual, another foreign vessel, education, knowledge cultivation. Oh, thank you for sharing your correct name. Awesome. That's awesome. Much, much honor and respect. Respect. Thank you, Cyberwatcher. Cyberwatcher did not change their name because change is modification and modification is perjury. That's basically a stop and correct, actually. Or you can, yeah, stop and correct. Just wanted to put the, uh... see, that, that's the whole thing. And, I, and I've always said this from the beginning. The most important thing is volition. Your grammar, excuse my language, your grammar can be shit, but if your volition is correct, honorable, and graceful, it will carry you through. As long as you're open to learning, okay, I know I can make some mistakes. I'm more than willing to stop and correct them if I'm given the closure as to why it's not correct. I'm more than open to fix something, right? And that's volition. You can have the most 100% awesome, correct grammar in the world, but if your volition is rotten, 
it's going to fall apart and it's not going to work. Those are just the, uh, some of the things I've experienced on a personal level. And I guess everyone else would just have to find out on their own how that works. The tech is pure. It's the volition of the person or man or woman using it that is the most important particle of the, the whole thing. For the coherence of the mind hyphen body hyphen spirit is with the steward of this ship by the steward. Well, my friend, you're missing one important part of your sentence there. You must have a possessive in front of the authority. So perhaps something like for the co coherence of the mind, body, spirit is with the steward of this ship with the correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, knowledge by the steward or something like that. So then backwards it would be for the steward of the correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar is with this ship of the steward with the mind, body, spirit, by the coherence. And I would, I would maybe add for more clarity for this stewards hyphen coherence, something like that to give closure to it. And yeah, stewardship's fine. You can use stewardship, mix it up a little bit. Always remember, for of verb, with of, with by. The verb is always followed by a with, and the by is always preceded by a with. And then he would just put an of in between there. It's always after the verb, it's always with of, with of, with of, with of, with of, with of, with by. Thank you very much, and I hope everyone has a wonderful day. You're very welcome. Much gratitude for your viewership, everyone. Bye-bye now.